All right, take us through the ratings. Uh, okay, so this this past week was um, one of the more interesting, I mean, I guess one of the most successful weeks for cable wrestling. Uh, WWE's show was second for the week. Number one was 90 Day Fiance on Sunday. Number two was Raw. Number three was the Wednesday night Olympics on USA, which beat AEW Dynamite by 5,000 viewers in 18 to 49. They were both .46s. So wrestling was number two and number four, and almost number two and number three. But um, I do not believe that there was there has been a time where wrestling for the week was when you had two different companies in the top four on cable um, going back maybe 1998, um, maybe. I mean, prob there probably would have been a week back, you know, in 1998 where both companies did really good and they were both top four. But you got you got to go back 23 years for that, which, which is... Um, Amazing when you think about it. Um, I don't even know that that Raw and SmackDown were ever both top four um, in the same week when SmackDown was on USA. Um, not for the week. I know I, I I'm relatively certain not for the week. So this was a real landmark week for pro wrestling. And considering you know the Olympics were were on USA every single night except for Monday in prime time. And did relatively well, and all the other sports that that are usually taking place. I mean, granted, the big sports there is no basketball. And obviously, there's no NFL. You know, which would be you know shows that would beat them, but they beat every entertainment show but one. And um, so it was a really, really uh, noteworthy week, and also the fact that it is so close. I mean, everyone's now. I mean, people are kind of picking up on the fact that. There's going to be a week soon, possibly. Um, I mean, there's still a lot of factors in play, but I think people expect that during football season there will be a week that AEW beats um, Raw. Some people think it's going to happen, you know, routinely, regularly. That one's going up and one's going down, and one's going to pass the other, and it's going to be not just one week, but it's going to be a regular occurrence. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's 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 close. Uh, football will hurt WWE a little bit. Um, AEW in theory. I mean, the big thing everyone's talking about is you know Punk and Danielson and whoever else. I mean, there's a. I'm I'm presuming that Ric Flair will be on an AEW television show at some point, relatively soon, whenever the non compete is up, and um, that. In theory, you know, if you advertise for a week that Ric Flair is going to be on, the curiosity will be very, very high. I mean, Flair's always been able to to draw the first time. I mean, it will not be one of those things where you bring in Flair and he's going to pop your ratings every week. And at some point, Punk and Danielson, as they become more and more routine, um, they may not increase, but they may increase the base. So it's a very... Um, you know, I could see maybe the the week of September 22nd, depending on the football game, depending on what Raw has. I mean, Raw has been helped in the last few weeks by Goldberg and John Cena being on a lot of shows. So you take that away. Um, and I think Monday is kind of an example of that. Um, Raw did a point four nine on Monday. Um, although that's what they did two weeks ago as well with, with um, I think... Uh, I forgot who was on, but but they did a point four nine not against the Olympics, so that was not good. Um, and the whole show, I mean, the two reasons why it was down is number one, they didn't advertise any matches, and they built the whole show around Randy Orton. And the result is what the result is. It should have been, I mean, if Randy Orton being off for for a couple months and a comeback where the entire show's built around him, um, I mean, it just. This 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 rating of Raw was, um, you know, I I don't want to say an indictment, but it was a reality check on the level of stardom of Randy Orton. If Randy or you know, if Randy Orton was uh, a big star, that number would have been significantly higher. And um, I mean, he's a star, but I mean a, a mover, a mover. You know, like John Cena was, like Bill Goldberg was last week. I'm you know. Um, 
uh, so you know there's different levels of stardom and and Randy's always treated like he's that level because you know he's got the look and he's a good worker but that doesn't necessarily make you a mover and you know I mean so many people have talked this week and I mean it's more and more you know because of the decisions made by WWE and the more I think about it I mean when you look at the people who have become movers, legit movers, um, you know, in whether it's boxing, whether it's MMA, and even like with AEW, one of the big movers was Darby Allen. And it's not like they go like to be the big mover, you got to be six two and two fifty or whatever, or whatever the whatever the 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 thing is, you know, to be a big main roster star. And it's like you every time they they go in that direction and believe me that was legit there was a time when we were all you know with mike tyson where the heavyweights ruled in boxing and there was a time when um the heavyweights ruled in mma or the light heavyweights which are still big guys ruled in mma a lot of times the light heavyweights was the big drawing division but you know that changed a long time ago gsp came along then mcgregor broke every record in the book floyd and oscar de la hoya broke records um floyd became one of the, the biggest pay-per-view the biggest pay-per-view draw of all time 147 to 150 pound guy and you can say well okay that's different because they're in weight classes and it doesn't count in wrestling and wrestling's still the same but if you're watching AEW, that is a company with a lot of smaller guys in high level positions. And we have seen, you know, many, many weeks where guys who do not fit the size requirements are the ones, um, Juventud Guerrera just last week on Dynamite, you know, who's not even, you know, I mean, a guy, you know, which is funny. I mean, Juventud Guerrera comes in. Um, obviously it was with Jericho and everything. It wasn't just Juventud Guerrero and, and all that, but they did, they still, that was the match that drew the biggest number on the best, the, you know, a show that was fourth for the week and a show that did their best 18 to 49 number, except for, I believe, week one in the history of the show. And, you know, you say whatever you want. Um, that's wrestling. So the idea that you have to be, you have to look a certain way. I mean, perhaps in the, you know, perhaps in the 80s, there was something to that. In the 80s, the 80s are 32 years ago was the end of the 80s. So if you're making your determinations based on what worked in the 80s, boy, you know, you might as well just, uh, you know, you're, you're in a, it's, it's a different world and, um, you know, WWE needs to get into this world and not into that world. Uh, but that's a different issue. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.